Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. God is good how often? All and all the time. Find somebody with a smile this morning through the mask and say, neighbor, neighbor. God, loves God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break our love in two. Amen, amen, amen. Certainly it is one more blessing from the great God of heaven that he has blessed each and every single one of us with the opportunity to come out this morning to worship and praise his holy and his divine name. I know you've been doing good, but you weren't that good. I know, I know you've been doing all right, but you weren't doing that all right, that the Lord just had to stop by your house on this morning. But that all, if you can't praise God for anything else, just think, out of the billions of people that are on this earth, God thought about you on this morning. There were many people that laid down last night just like you laid down, but they were not able to get up. And not even that fact, but you were able to get out of the bed by yourself. You know, if somebody somewhere got to ring a bell and wait on somebody to come and get them out of the bed. But the Lord has blessed you to not just be alive, but he's blessed you with the activity of your limb. You, you can go to the refrigerator and get what you want when you want to get it out of there. The Lord has been good and the Lord is worthy of our I praise and I know some of us wait to hit the lottery before we decide to thank God but let me tell you you ought to thank God for the little things that he does in your life inhaling and exhaling you ought to thank the Lord one foot in front of the other you ought to thank the Lord food on your table might not be a steak but you got some vienna sausages some potted meat guess what you got enough to praise the Lord for God is certainly good, and we thank him for this opportunity to be here. As always, thankful for those that are watching us via live stream on this morning. We're glad that you've tuned in to be with us here, and prayerfully something will be said throughout our services that will be of a blessing to your life. And I don't know those that are watching, but those that are here in our audience that are visiting with us, we're glad to have you. Man, I, I'm glad to have um, with us today Brother Ellis, uh, the Assistant Minister of the Green Meadows Church of Christ there in Tennessee, who is here with us um, on today. He's, he's surprised me. I ain't know he surprised me this morning. So glad to have he and his girlfriend who are here um, with us today. And prayerfully, God will send you our way here in a, uh, uh, again in the future. Um, anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. Let us let it go to 1 Samuel chapter number 17. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. We're going to begin at verse number 20. I ain't forgot you, Sister Reed. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, Lord, and hear my humble cry, Lord, and while, while on others thou art called. pass me and y'all call him your Savior oh sweet Savior why don't you hear my my humble cry Lord While on others I are calling, Master, and do, do not pass me by, then let me at thy throne of mercy. Lord, please find a sweet relief. Well, I'm kneeling there in deep. 
contrition. Lord, please help, help my unbelief, and we're calling you. Oh, sweet Savior, why don't you hear my, my humble cry? Lord, and why, while on the other side are calling? And do, do not pass. Amen. First Samuel chapter 17, beginning at verse number 20. And the Bible says, And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench. Tell somebody you can come out of the trenches. As the host was going forth to fight and shouted for battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines. And spake concerning the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be, that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make him his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man? that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Pray with me if you will. Father God in heaven, is indeed we are grateful. Grateful for another opportunity that you have blessed us with to come and feast at the table of your word. Father, we can't do anything until you come. So, Father, we ask at this time that you be with us. Father, I pray that you would hide me behind Calvary's cross, that no flesh would take any glory in that that you ought to receive. And, Father, if you grant us these petitions and prayers, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you for doing so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to give for our subject um, on this morning, how to defeat your giants. I guess we ain't got no giants in here. Yeah, you, you, know, you know, some of us got giants that we don't recognize. You know, some of us been, been dealing with our giants for so long that we treat it like it's the elephant in the room that is not really there. But your giants don't have to defeat you. You can actually defeat your giants. How to slay the giant. And I think that this is a beautiful outline of what has to happen if you're going to be able to defeat the giants in your life. Because when we look at what David did and what happened that brought the mighty victory that we all know as David versus Goliath. But really it was God using David to defeat Goliath. You have to understand that there are some very clear steps that he took that transformed an ordinary man and took him from being an ordinary man into being a giant slayer. And I want you to see that, women. We just begin reading in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse number 20. And he says, And David arose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight 
fight and shouted for battle. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, did all this. The King James says going out or coming out of the trenches. It says in the same in some translations. And as the army was coming out of the trenches, they went up shouting for battle. Now, I'm just going to take the part and then we'll, we'll keep going. Keep your Bibles open if you got them, because I'm going to keep going back to the scripture to make our points, because I want you to notice I'm going to give you some qualities that have to be real in your life if you're going to be able to defeat the giants in your life. Now, number one, the Bible says that David, notice what it says. The Bible says his father told him to go down and take the folks some bread and cheese. That's in verses 18 and 19, preceding verse number 20. He tells him to take them some bread and cheese. It's right there in the previous verses. I didn't take the time to read it, but he said, take some bread and cheese to your brothers and see how the battle is going. Now, what's interesting about this is there's a lesson in this for all of us. Because David had already been anointed to be the king over Israel, but he had not yet been appointed. But when his father, who was his parent, his dad said to him, go down and basically, I want you to go down there and be a servant to your brothers. I want you to go down there on the battlefield, not as a king. I want you to go down there carrying stuff for them people to be able to eat. Now notice that. And the first point I want to make is that in order for you to be able to defeat your giants, you got to be submitted to the will of God. In order for you to be able to defeat your giants, you have to be submitted. Because at that moment, he had to make a decision. He had he could have reared up his in his dad's face and said, man, who do you think you're talking to? I have been appointed to be the king over Israel. Who do you think you're talking to? The prophet Samuel prophesied that I would sit on a throne and that it would have no end. Who do you think that you are speaking to? I'm too important to be taking somebody some bread and Gee, somebody else should be carrying that on their shoulders. Somebody else should be doing that. What are you talking about? They should sound some trumpets and let them know that I'm coming on the field because after all, I'm the king of Israel. I'm David. His dad was his authority. And I've never seen an unsubmitted giant killer. You have to be submitted. You have to get under what God puts over you and you'll never get over what God put under you. And you don't know what you or you don't know that you're unsubmitted until you have the opportunity not to be. And in the moment, I think it's something we race right over. But I've never seen an unsubmitted giant killing. You can have talent because David was a remarkable musician. You can have a calling. David was called. You can have the anointing, but if you are not submitted to the authority, such as the parents or the spiritual leaders, the Bible says, let everyone submit themselves to spiritual authority or to the higher powers. The King James puts it as, in other words, how to react to authority determines whether or not you can defeat your giant. And it's so important to know that everybody say amen right there too. So submit yourself and the giants will fall. Submit yourself to the word of God. Submit yourself to the authority of godly people that God has put around you and open the door for you to sit under. You ought to have somebody around you that can be of good influence to you so that when you are struggling with your faith, they can build up your faith. You need people around you that don't always have something negative to say. You need people around you that when you are trying to do the work of the Lord, they're not trying to talk you out of what God is doing in your life, but they push you forward in the promises of God. I don't want nobody around me. Man, why are you always going to that church? Why are you always trying to serve God? Why are you always praying? Why are you always doing this? Man, if you had good sense, you would be doing it too because the Bible said that he'll keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. If I didn't think about Jesus, man, I go cuckoo for cocoa. But if my mind was not on Jesus, I would have lost my mind a long time ago. So I got to keep myself centered on him because he is the one that keeps me centered. Number two, I like the fact that the Bible said 
that they came up out of the trenches. I like that. It said that they came up out of the trenches. You know that this giant, this giant can be nine foot tall. But the trenches would be like a ditch that they dug to defend themselves and have a safe place. They would, they would peep out of the trenches to see what the enemy was. And sometimes, even though a giant might have been nine foot tall, if you're down in the trenches and you're looking up, he might look 15 feet tall to you. Because you're looking out of the trenches. Because when you're down, that's when, notice the enemy's coming of the giant is very strategic. He came when they were in the trenches. Not when they were walking around alert, could see everything that was going on. He came while they were in the trenches. So when they looked up and they saw Goliath marching out, he looked bigger than what he actually was because they were down. There comes a moment where the trench, which is a low place, your enemy will always show up when you're at your lowest point. I said the enemy will always show up when you're at your lowest point. Let me give you a New Testament example since we're a New Testament church. Jesus was out in the wilderness. You remember that? He had been fasting for 40 days. Do you remember that? And it wasn't on the 10th day. It wasn't on the 20th day. It wasn't on the 30th day. But it was on the last day that Satan came unto him and said, If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. It was at his weakest moment that he came and tried to tempt Satan but apparently he didn't know who it was that he was speaking to because he was speaking to the very word in existence and Jesus was able to stand against those things that he had thrown at him. Now he came and, and when you're down below in the trenches, that's when he shows up and it's strategic in his appearance. I want you to remember that because the enemy was big because they were down. I wonder how many of us are looking at some situations that are really little, but we think they're big because of our perspective. Because of the way that we look at it. Because of the way that we think about it. If you'll get up, you'll find out that it's not as big as you thought it was. If you get up, you'll find out that it wasn't as powerful as you thought it was. And if you'll get up, you'll find out that the spirit that has your child, that the, that the same spirit that David was trusting in. Because just imagine if David would have been talking all that noise to Goliath and he didn't know God. Oh, I'm, oh, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And he had God on his side. Could you imagine what the story would have looked like for David? Had he just went out there running his flap and talking to his God and he didn't have God on his side? And let me tell you, we got to be careful because before you go out and try to defeat your giants, you want to make sure that you got God on your, I don't hear nobody. You want to make sure that before you go out, to try to conquer and achieve certain things in your life. You want to make sure that God is first place. You want to make sure that God is included in your plan. Because as long as God is in your plan, let me tell you, it's going to work out for the good. I didn't say it's going to work out for your good, but it's going to work out for the good. All things work together for the good. You may not understand why this happened and why that happened and why this happened, but all of it is working together for the good. How many of y'all just go in your kitchen and get you a handful of flour and eat it? How many of y'all just go in your kitchen and get you a handful of eggs and just eat it because you like it like that? How many of y'all just go in there and get you a, a, a stick of butter and just eat it because you like it like that? You don't like it like that. But once you put it all together, and you let get the mixing and go, you got you a cake after a while, you got something. Now, all of those things on their own, they may seem insignificant, but when those things work together, you got something that you can be pleased with. And that is why we may not understand the very instances that we encounter in life, but all of it is, is eventually going to work together for the good of them that love God and the called according to his purpose. Can I tell you this morning, God has not called you to be in a trench of depression. He ain't called you for that. He's called you to get up. And if giant killers are not only disciplined, giant killers are not only submitted, but they get up. How many of us have 
allowed our faith to get weakened by circumstances and we just lay there. Just sit there and, and wallow in it as if we have not experienced God before. Just sit there and wallow in it and, and allow depression and anxiety to creep up on us as if we don't know that we serve a God that can take care of our issue. That's our issue. We got to stop trying to fight battles that belong to God. We got to stop trying to fix stuff that should be left up to God. The Bible told them stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He didn't tell them to go in there trying to fix nothing, trying to alternate nothing. He just it says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and child of God let me tell you once you have taken those worries and those cares before the feet of God and you are trusting him to do something about it don't look back don't worry about it you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord you ought to be tired of being down all the time you ought to look up every now and then. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you here, you got to start pulling yourself up. How do you pull yourself up? By praising the Lord. How do you pull yourself up? By not just praising the Lord, but by focusing on God and declaring the word of the Lord. I know I may be sick. I may not have many days that I feel good. But I know what the word of the Lord said, that he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am here. I got to remember the word of the Lord. Too many of us, we remember what the doctor said. We remember what our friends said and what everybody else said. You got to start remembering what thus saith the Lord. And as we're talking about on Wednesday night, you got to be a person of prayer. And allow God to lift you up. And as you go up, you'll remember what do you do when you are low? What you do when you are low and looking at your enemy? will determine if you're going to have victory. It will determine, do, do you shrivel or shrink? Do you get discouraged because you don't have enough faith to stand against the situation? Or do you remember the word of the Lord? Just, to, just look at what David said. I love what David said. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he should defy the armies of the Lord. David said, I see all of y'all running scared with your tails tucked between your legs. Because you're seeing a man that's nine foot tall. And in your flesh you're getting fearful and you are afraid. But you don't remember the God that we are serving. Because the God that we are serving is greater than any giant that could ever come our way. And let me tell you, I don't care what kind of giant situations you are facing in your life on this morning morning don't wrestle with that thing so long that you allow it to damage your faith and to ruin your belief in God you hand that thing over to Jesus and let him fix it for you if you're going to be a giant killer you can't giant killers say to themselves they say stuff like this I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Giant killers lift up their voice. And they don't just lift up their voice for themselves. Giant killers pray for their family members. Because you recognize you're not the only one in your house that got a devil to fight. How many parents in here are actually going to war for your children? I mean, I mean because you know. I mean because you know that when they're not in your sight. They got a devil that they got to battle against. And you got to remember that a lot of our kids, they are still trying to mature in faith, trying to get to the point to where they can stand for themselves. We need some mamas and some daddies that's going to go down on their knees before the throne of God. If you see your child going in a direction that they should not go, you ought to be going down on your knees before the throne of God. Give that thing over to him and let him fix it for you. So you can't be silent. You can't sit back while the devil just having his way. You got to speak out. Get on your knees and let God know. Lord, you promised me in your word. You promised me, Lord.
Lord, you said, bring up to remembrance what the word of the Lord has already said. Devil, you can't have my kids. You, you, you might have them up, but guess what? You can't have mine. Devil, you can have somebody else's wife, but guess what? You can't have mine. You might have somebody else's husband, but guess what? You can't have mine because guess what? We have been covered in the blood of Jesus. And when you keep yourself covered, and that's where the thing, you got to, you got to be, stop being stingy with your prayers. You got to stop being stingy with your prayer. Your whole house need to be covered in prayer. Your whole house need to be covered in prayer. And not only does your whole house need to be covered in prayer, your whole house need to be instructed in the word of God. So when they are on their own, they ain't got to get on the phone and call you and ask you how to fix a thing. I can go to the word on my own and I can find what it is that I need to do to get over this issue. So we ought to be fighting for our families. You ought to be fighting for your home. Devil, I don't know where you're going, but you got to get up out of here. Lift up your voice and pray. Stop using your voice to complain and grumble and moan because you groaning and mumbling and complaining. And when you get done, the situation is just like it was when you started. You got to go down on your knee. I'm not going to post this thing on Facebook. I'm not going to tweet about this thing, but I'm going to take it to the Lord in prayer. So you got to fight for your family. You got to fight. You got to lift up your voice in prayer. You got to lift up your voice in prayer. Now notice something else. I want you to see this in verse number 25. It says, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to the fire Israel is he come and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Have y'all seen him? Ooh, ain't he tall? Look how broad them shoulders here, man. He like he just blow at you and knock you down. Look how short, look how strong he look. Now we gotta stop looking at our things as if they are so giant and powerful. And remember how strong and powerful our God is. Because my Bible tells me that I can't just do some things, but I can do. Through Jesus Christ, that gives me the strength. So no matter how big this thing, and I love on the way he says somewhere, he said that you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast to yonder place, and it shall be done unto you. And you got to know that he's not just talking about a physical mountain. So don't you go over there to Mount Vesuvius looking at it, talking about move and go to yonder place. Because you're just going to be wasting your breath because it's not getting up and it's not going anywhere. But everybody, I don't care who you are everybody right here this morning you got a this mountain everybody in here got a this issue everybody in here got a this problem that you are dealing with and he is saying that if you just have faith the grain of a mustard seed you can speak to that thing and what's gonna happen it's gonna move and nothing shall be impossible unto you and it says, shall, shall be done. So, so what did he just do in verse number 25? They just got focus off the battle to the reward. They weren't just worried about defeating Goliath. You know, whoever defeated him, they're going to get some stuff. They're going to get some stuff for the king. They're going to be set free. They're going to have all, they're going to have all this stuff. So, so number one, you're going to get to marry the king's daughter. She, and, and then number two, you were going to get his riches. And then number three, you will never pay taxes on all that you're going to inherit from the king. That sounds like a good deal to me, man. That's, that sounds that sound like a pretty good package deal. So that's in verse number 25. Now, where verse, now watch verse number 26. It says, then David spoke to the man who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of God? Watch. And the people answered him in this manner saying, so it shall be done for the man that kills him. And they just repeated what they already heard two times. Now watch this. It gets even more interesting. Then Eliab, his older brother, heard and spoke to the men. And he walked up to David and said, why did you come down here? Uh, 
Why did you leave those? Listen to this little put down that he's trying to give him. What have you come down here for? What? You don't, don't you got people in your life like that? You know that when you're always trying to do good, what you doing that for? What? Why are you trying to do that? Huh? You just want somebody to see you. You just, you just doing that for show. You just doing that for glory. If you would spend more time trying to do what you're supposed to do, you wouldn't have no time to worry about what other people are doing. Can I tell you that's the biggest downfall of us as Christians? We are so worried about what's going on across the street, what's going on across town, what's going on in a city over, when we don't know what's going on in our own house. So he tells him, and, and Eliab, he tells him, he said, what, what you come down here for? Why is it? Why is it that you come down? Those few sheep that you are over, you know, the, the, that limited flock that you got out there, you know, what, what you have left them for? Stay in your place. David, you ain't nobody. You're not important. Why do you care about this battle? You're just supposed to come down here and deliver the cheese and the other stuff that daddy told you to bring out here. But notice what David did next. And his brother says, I know your pride. You've come down for the battle. And David says in verse number 29, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? And you're not going to believe this. Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. What is the reward? And the same thing was answered as the first one did. What am I trying to say? This is a big clue to the giant killer. Giant killers, those that defeat their giants, focus on the reward more than they focus on the risk. Could you imagine if they would have focused more on what Goliath was able to do to them? On what he had the intention of doing to them. But they weren't worried about any of that. David recognized the purpose of which God had called him. And even though David didn't have no big old sword to carry. Even though David didn't have the best armor that he could have had. God took a rock and a slingshot. And gave that man enough accuracy to hit that man in the right spot to knock him down. Now, now, I'm not saying that the rock was strong enough to knock him down. But it was the God that was behind the rock that was able to knock him down. Let me tell you, whatever it is that you have, you may not think it is enough. But God can take the little bit that you have and God can make it more than enough. Church, the battle is worth fighting. The battle for your children is worth fighting. The battle for your spouse is worth fighting. The battle for your peace of mind is worth fighting. Some of us, some of us, I don't know why some of us are stay in some situation that's just damaging our mental health and all that kind. We are still around there. It is not good. You need to get away from those situations. Thank you, D. You got to get away from those situations. And you got to get bold enough to say, devil, you can't come up in here. You got to get bold enough. Stop letting the devil whoop up on you and start whooping up on the devil every now and then. You can't come up in here. My children are going to be covered in prayer. My house is going to be covered in prayer. Everywhere I go, I'm going to have Jesus on the inside of me because I know your tactics. I know your devices. You're trying to take me down. You're trying to take me out. But you don't see the God that's standing up behind me and I shall have victory. Now watch this. Uh, watch this. Let me give you that. In verse number 39, verse number 39, let's go to verse number 39. It says, and David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I can't go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. You know what he was saying? If you're going to defeat your giants, you got to be yourself. David is saying, you're going to really defeat your giants, you're going to have to be who you are. You can't go and defeat your giants wearing another man's armor. 
You can't go and defeat your giant using another man's sword. And, and I love that. I love that because David, David, he fastened a sword to his armor and he tried to walk out. And David said, I can't take this stuff. I haven't tested it. It's too heavy for me. I can't carry this by myself. You know what he was saying? Saul, I'm not you. Saul, I can't go out there trying to be you. God didn't anoint you to be somebody that you are not. And I know, David said, I know that this little raggedy slingshot that I got don't look shiny and as beautiful as that big sword that you have, but this is what God gave me. And if it's what God gave you, church, that's all that you need. Look at somebody this morning and say, if God gave it to you, that's all that you need. I know it may look like a little raggedy slingshot to you, but guess what? I'm going to use it to the glory of God. And once I trust God with it, God will take down every giant that decides to raise head up against me. This is the gift God gave me. And it may look like a riding lawnmower to you, but in God's eyesight, it's a brand new Rolls Royce coming off the showroom. Amen, somebody. But this is the gift that God gave me. And it's powerful. It's powerful. Let's look at verse number four. He says, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. He didn't wait for the Philistine to come to him. He went to the Philistine. He didn't wait till the battle got started. Oh man, where my slingshot at? I got I to get this stuff together. Oh, he, he coming, I got to get ready. He didn't wait for that. David was waiting on the enemy to come. And let me tell you, child of God, that is why it's important that you stay in the word of God. That is why you stay arming up so that when the devil does rear up his head, you got the word of God with you so you can stand against in the day of testing. So many of us, we are unprepared when trials, when tribulations come our way. But if you have the word of God, you got all that you need to stand and be successful in the day of testing. David didn't wait for Goliath to come to him he drew near to the Philistine in other words you want to fight Joker bring it on I'm ready I'm ready I'm locked and loaded God has gave me what I need and I know I'm going to be successful I know I'm going to be successful so the question is why in the world did he get five stones wouldn't one be enough why in the world did he get five stones He's only fighting one giant. And by the time he's trying to lock another rock, that you're lying to be the cat. Why is it that he got five stones? Because I believe the lesson in this may be the most important. If you are going to defeat your giants, you got to be determined. You got to have some determination about yourself. I believe that he had the kind of mentality, if I don't kill you with this first one, this fourth one going to take you down. If I, if I don't get you with this first one, I got a second one that's on the way. You might shake the second one, but I got a third one that's coming. And let me try to God, you got to have faith that can take a licking and what? Keep right on to You got to have faith that, is, that does not get so easily damaged by the affairs of this life. But you got to have a faith that can stand. In the days of trials. In the day of testing. So when you see Goliath coming over the hill, you're not trying to run and get behind the curtain and hide. If this is what you want, Goliath? I'm here. Come on, buddy. I'm ready. I'm ready. Somebody should have told you about me. Somebody, somebody should have told. They should have told you that while I was out there looking at my sheep, they were, it was a lion and a bear one day that tried to come and do something to my sheep. And with my bare hands, I took them jokers out of here. And now I'm going to use a rock and a slingshot. And the same way I did to them, I'm going to do it to you as well because God is on my side. And can I tell you this morning, you may feel like you're insignificant. You may feel like you can 
can't do it. You may feel like you can't achieve it because you're not big enough, because you're not bold enough, because you're not strong enough. But wherever you lack, let me tell you, God will pick up the slack. Wherever you cannot, God can step in and he can do what it is that you think is impossible. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. David was determined. And if you are going to be able to defeat the giants in your life, church, you're going to have to be determined. You cannot get discouraged because you didn't win the first round. How many of y'all ever won in the first round? Be real with yourself. Not, not often. Every now and then. Sometimes we don't wake up to the fourth or fifth round. Oh, I'm in a fight. Oh, it's war going on. I'm in spiritual warfare. The devil is trying to take, oh, I'm just not recognizing. Let, let me get ready. Let me get, let me get myself together. All right. But the beauty in that is being able to get knocked down and get back up again. Amen. To remain close to God, even though it feels like these things are just getting bigger and bigger. And ain't that like life? Yeah. That instead of our problems sometimes getting small, it seems like they just get bigger. They get bolder and they get stronger. And we're like, Lord, how am I going to be able to deal with this? Lord, how am I going to be able to handle it? God has given you what you need. And whatever God gave you, if it ain't nothing but a rock and a slingshot, guess what? It's all that you need to be successful. It's all that you need. David said, if I didn't get you with the first one, guess what? I got a second one that's on the way. If I didn't get you with the second one, guess what? I got a third one that's on the way. If I didn't get you with that third one, guess what? I got a fourth one. This fifth one is going to be the home run. I got another one coming for you. You got to have some backup stones, church. Are you determined to defeat your giants? Are you determined this morning? Are you determined to defeat your giants? I, it was a song that said, giants do die. The bigger they are, y'all know what it say. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. The Bible says that he goes out and he throws that stone. And when he hits that stone, Goliath went down, y'all. Because David was submitted to the will of God. Not only was he submitted to the will of God, he was upbeat. He got up. David was determined to defeat his giant. Giant killers, if you're going to defeat your giants, you see trials in life as training and not trouble. You realize that God allowing me to experience this and not necessarily because I'm in some type of trouble, but this is training ground. Because let me tell you, if you can get over this hurdle today, he going to intensify it on tomorrow. And if you can break through what he got for you tomorrow, he's going to intensify it the day after. He's coming back bigger. He's coming back better every time. That's why you got to build up your faith so that you can stand against those things that come church. He took the head of Goliath all the way. David said, I want y'all to see what the Lord did for me. And, and you know, David was so bold, he took that man's sword and took his head off. Not only did he take him down with a slingshot, David took the man's own sword and cut off his head. He took authority, church. David did what it was that he could do, not in and of himself. But he did it through the power of God. How many times have we read that story and said, oh, look at what David did. It's what God did through David. That can be tied to every great man. I want that we read about in the scripture. I tell you, Moses didn't know how to get out of Egypt. He was just following God. Abraham didn't even know how to get away from his father's house. He just had to follow God. And I, how many of y'all can be honest and say, sometimes you don't know if you're going or if you Some of y'all could be honest and say, some days I don't know if I'm going left or if I'm... Be real with yourself. Some days you don't know if you're looking up or if you're looking down. We got to trust God. We got to put our faith in Him. Because sometimes we get so wrapped up in our emotions and 
we get wrapped up in faith. You can't trust your emotions and your feelings. Because, especially if you're acting in the moment. They'll lead you in the wrong way. That is why we got to trust God. Imagine if David wanted to showboat. Oh, man. You know who my God is running out there against Goliath. But without first considering God, without first consulting God, they would have just been another spot on the ground. After Goliath got done with him. And the ravens would have came along to finish up what was left. Had he went out there. How many of y'all can be honest and say, man, there have been times when I've tried to go out and go alone. And I'm back at square one again. Man, there have been so many times that God took too long to answer. And I thought that I had a better answer or solution than what God was going to give me. So I had an Abraham and Sarah moment and I wanted to help God out. I wanted to help God get his plan through. So I tried to intervene and do something. And I looked, I got myself in more trouble than I was in the beginning. Every single person in here is in some kind of battle. Every person in here is in a fight. Everybody in here got a giant that they're facing. Not necessarily a physical giant. Some of us just can't, get, can't have a peaceful night's sleep because we got giants in our head. Giants in our mind, stuff that we've allowed to just grow bigger and bigger. And that's, the, and that's the thing. When you notice something, you need to address things that are going on in your life. And, and that's our biggest problem, especially with us. We love to sweep stuff under the rug and act like it's not there. And then the next time you notice what was a little anthill has grown into a mountain. What your, what your mama told you, you got to nip that thing. <laughs> and don't wait when they said, look, 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 you can't wait until a tree done got full grown to try to bend it. You got to bend that thing while it's young. <laughs> Who knows something about that? You got you to bend that thing while it's young. Address the issue when you notice it. Some of us are fighting things that are giants today that didn't used to be giants. But we just acted like it wasn't there. Thought that if we just didn't think about it, it would disappear. You know what? If I just don't focus on it, if I don't think about it, if I don't go a certain place, it won't come across my mind. But then you find yourself sometimes in the stillness of the night. When it ain't nobody but you, yourself, and yourself. And those memories start to come back to your mind. Memories of, you know, and you know, stuff that folks say to you can last a long while. Amen. Not necessarily, and not always times things that people say to you, the way people treat you. Amen. Things that they say to you. The way people handle you sometimes, that can be a memory in your mind. So many, how, I, I wonder how many of us in here carrying baggage that's 20 and 25 years old. Because we've never taken time to address it. We think that we're just going to be all right. But church, I tell you, and I got a man right here, here tell you, you need to address that stuff. You need to address those situations that are going on in your life. It's good to have Jesus. Sometimes you need to go sit on the couch. Sometimes you need to get those things out of you. Because if you don't, it'll take you out of your church. Stress is a killer. And many of us are stressed out, number one, on things that we can't control in the first place. If you wanted to change it, you couldn't even change it. So why are you stressed out? If you wanted it to go a different way, you couldn't do anything about it. So why are you sitting up worrying about things that you cannot alter? Give it to God. Let God handle it. He can defeat your giants. It may be too big for you. But God is too big for it. It may be too big for you. But when you give that thing over to God. And say God I can't do anything with it. You take it. It's in your hand. Man God can do miracles. It's like when Jesus was up. On the mountain of transfiguration. And you got the disciples down at the bottom of the mountain. Struggling. 
to get the demon out of the boy that was possessed. They down there struggling for three hours. Jesus come down in three seconds, cast out. <laughs> what they were struggling with for all that time. He's able, church. He's able. The word says to do exceeding and abundant. Above all that you could ever ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. If you're struggling this morning, give God your load. It's too heavy for you. You can't bear it by yourself. Give it to Jesus. And allow him to make it better for you. Can I tell you, this won't be the last time you face a giant in your life. It may be a new one going to knock on your door in the morning. All of us are going to encounter giants in our life. In various ways, shapes, and forms. But however it comes, you got a God that is able. You serve a God that is able to defeat it. And remember who gets the glory when the enemy is defeated. It's not David that killed Goliath. But it was God through David that killed Goliath. And you can do church all things through Christ that strengthens you. So it's not that I'm just going to sit around and be worried about this thing and let it take me to an early grave. That ain't going to happen. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to give it to him and let him take care of it. He's able this morning. Even now, maybe someone this morning is struggling with situations this morning. God is able. You're struggling in different areas of your life. God is able to help you with what you're dealing with. You don't have to go it alone. You don't have to do it by yourself. God is ready, willing, and able to help you with what it is that you're dealing with. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would come and open the door, he said, I would, but come in and sup with you. I want to come in and make my abode with you. He wants to come in and make a difference in your life. He will do that if you just give him an opportunity. Jesus ain't kicking in nobody's door. He's standing at the door and he's knocking. Give him an opportunity to take care of those things that are weighing you down. Those things that are pressuring you. Bring it to the feet of Jesus. We sing the song. Take your burdens to the Lord. And look back at them tomorrow. He said, for if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave them there and trust that God is able to handle your situations. How many of y'all believe this morning that God is able? Yeah. I, I, I'm not just able. How many of y'all believe he's more than able? If you really believe that, start trusting him. Not just trusting him for today. Trust him for your tomorrow. Next week on the way, I don't know what it's going to hold, but I trust that God is going to take care of me. Start trusting him with your life. Start trusting him with the decisions that you make. Lord, this is a decision that I want to make. If you want me to do it, Lord, bless it. But if you don't, take it out of the way. Start trusting God with your life. And let God lead you. To where he wants you to go. My friend, my brother, my sister, maybe you're here today. You're struggling. You're struggling. You're fighting the giants. Even on this morning, God is able. He's able to defeat anything that you are facing on this morning. Some of us, maybe you're here on this morning. You stand a guilty distance away from God. You're not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. God has granted you, my friend, another opportunity. That you have an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Time is passing by for all of us. You recognize that? Can I tell you something? You're not going to be here forever. You're just a pilgrim, a sojourner, passing through barren land. And since you know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear, why not get yourself prepared to meet the Lord in peace? Jesus is waiting even this morning for the alien sinner far from the grace of God. You've heard the word of God on this morning. Do you believe the word of God? You've heard Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You've heard the word. Now do you believe the same word that you've heard? If you believe it, it comes a time for you to repent of your sins. Why do I need to repent of my sins? Repentance is a change of my mind. 
a change of my will that produces a change in my action. After you repented of your sins, confess with your mouth the sweetest thing known to mortal tongue, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And after confession, be baptized for the remission of your sin. Have your sins washed away, done away with never to rise before you in this life, and neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord adds to the church daily such as should be saved. Maybe you're here this morning, you're already a Christian, but you say, hey preacher, I got some giants that I'm fighting. I got some things that I'm dealing with and I'm just standing in the need of prayer. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous truly they avail as much. So my brother, my sister, my friend, even for those that are watching on this morning, maybe you're watching, you're subject to the invitation. Please message us, reach out, let us know how we can help you. Because our hope is that you too can have the hope of heaven. Maybe my brother, my sister, if you're here in our audience today and you're subject to the invitation, I beckon, I plead with you, don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. You can come now, come to Jesus as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Yeah.